I fell in love with a bartender. Last call for Mr. Parker Smith. I heard the flight announcing and rushed towards it. I didn't know a simple reminder from an airline would change my life like this and make me decide to go to Hawaii all alone as part of my honeymoon. The tragedy began yesterday when it was my wedding day. I have been waiting for months, but it turned out to be the worst day of my life. A nightmare. Flashback. Where's Carrie? I kept asking everyone around as my best friend, also my best man or maid of honor, is missing on the day of my wedding. Hey Duke, have you seen Carrie? I asked again. Ah, I guess I saw her going upstairs, he replied, giving me relief. I went up, knocking on doors until I reached the last room on the floor and opened the knob to a shocking, heartbreaking sight. I saw Akoi, my fiancé, on top of Carrie, naked, on the same bed. Akoi and I promised to be with each other and husband and husband the night before. Wait, Parker, let me explain, said Carrie, who was equally stunned after getting caught. Parker, just please listen once, Akoi added. I just stood there trying to wrap my head around what just had happened. There's nothing left to explain. We're done, I said, throwing the ring I got for Akoi on the floor. I shut the door hard and walked out of the marriage venue. I went straight to the liquor store nearby and got myself a bunch of bottles. I started driving without knowing where I was going. After hours of simply driving nowhere, I reached a quiet place surrounded by a river. I stopped nearby, took the alcohol bottle, and went out. I leaned on my car and started drinking. The thoughts of him being with my best friend flooded my mind. I have been betrayed by both my love and my friend at the same time, and I don't even know who to be angry at. But more than that, Okoy was with a girl when he clearly told me he is gay and dated me for three years and we were about to get married. This means he also lied about his sexuality to me and broke my trust. I kept drinking and before I knew it, tears started flowing. Instead, I cried louder with everything in me, screamed knowing no one could hear me. I was drunk by then and miserable. I threw two bottles nearby after emptying it. My eyes followed another bottle laying nearby which read Rat Kill. I smiled to myself before moving towards the bottle. My drunk self thought the most stupid idea ever and I picked the bottle to drink the poison until my phone rang which got me back to my senses. Hello Mr. Parker, this is to remind you about your flight tomorrow morning at 6am to Hawaii. We expect you and Mr. Akoi to board with us by 5am, a lady on the other side of the phone said. I went silent for a minute while she kept saying, Hello? I took a deep breath and decided not to waste this opportunity and give myself some break from all of this. Yeah, sorry, lost the network. I will be there tomorrow alone, I said, cutting the call. I was so drunk, so I waited a bit to get sober, then drove back to my home, which was decorated to welcome my husband. I walked inside, stepping on the flowers I kept for him to walk on, ruining it with every step. My bag was already packed, so I decided to take a nap to make myself feel better. End the flashback. I woke up really late and rushed toward the airport. I didn't even have time to change or get fresh, so I ran in my wedding shirt and pants from yesterday. I heard the announcer giving the last call for my name, and I rushed my speed through the airport, chanting sorry to everyone. Soon I reached the plane and got inside. I got the judging look from everyone that soon turned into a pity look. Then I informed the air hostess I am alone, and Okoy won't be joining me. Soon enough, people realized that what could have happened. I sat on my designated seat and took a deep breath. The flight took off and I sat there, deciding to leave whatever happened behind and give these four days all to myself. After a long day of sitting in the flight, we finally reached by 7 in the night. I realized how a call from them saved my life. While getting off the plane, I thanked the air hostess for the only reason I knew. As I got out the airport, I could feel a fresh breeze and beachy sand in the air. The warmth of the place was hitting my skin, calming my emotions. I smiled, feeling the Hawaiian energy in me. I walked further, a car was already waiting, expecting the two of us. Hi, I'm Parker, I booked the cab, I told the guy. Yes, hello Mr. Parker, let me help you with your luggage, he said. Thank you. Should we wait for your partner, sir? He asked me with some hesitation. Oh no, it will only be me, we should leave now, I said, and he nodded. In an hour or so, I reached my hotel after enjoying the beautiful night view of Hawaii, which was so underrated. I signed in. I already called them beforehand to remove all the decorations, as I don't want anything related to my wedding anymore. I unlocked the room and it was so big and beautiful, but before anything I wanted to get fresh and grab a bite. My stomach was making weird noises out of hunger. I settled in and went straight to take a shower. After a while I got ready wearing those loose black shirt perfect for the beach city I was in. I thought of exploring the place by myself instead of ordering the food in. I went down and started walking. Even though there were less people around me, the noise was enough to keep the neighborhood alive. I saw many shops nearby, of which one caught my attention. It was a bar called Hard Rock. 
and a typical brown and cream color building matching with the rest of the city's aesthetic. The place looked nice, so I walked inside. As I was getting in, I noticed a girl throwing her hands in the air, trying to free herself from something. I walked closer to see it was a drunk man holding her. I immediately rushed towards her. Hey, leave her alone, I shouted. Get out, man, he replied back in his drunk voice. I had no other option. I went behind the man and tried to push him away from the girl. All my efforts were going to waste in front of this man who was double my size, full of tattoos and piercings, looking like a local goon. He turned back and I was ready to get hit as I saw him coming with a punch. I closed my eyes, waiting to get knocked out, but the punch never came. His hands never hit me. I opened my eyes to see a guy holding him by the wrist and hitting him in all the right places, like a pro martial arts person would do. The girl grabbed her stuff and mouthed us a thank you before running away from the man. The security soon came in and took the guy out, but I was standing there all this while looking at the man in front of me who might have just saved my life. He looked at me and asked, hey are you fine? And I nodded. He has this dominant energy in him that was very much visible. Thank you, I said, which was covered with those noise that my stomach just made, embarrassing me in front of him. He laughed. Hungry? He asked, and I nodded. Come with me, he said, and I followed him. I noticed him going behind the counter wearing his apron with a badge on it that read Alex. I didn't know he works there. No one could tell that with the way he looks. After some 5-10 minutes, he came out of the room holding a tray full of food. He placed it in front of me. There were noodles, chickens, and some fries on the side. I looked at him. On the house, he said, placing a glass of orange drink in front of me. What is this? I asked. My special margarita, he replied smiling. He went to attend the last few customers as the place was about to close for the day, but he told me to take my time as he was the one closing it tonight. Soon I finished my food and everyone around us left, leaving just the two of us. It was no lie that I had already felt attracted toward him. He sat behind me and said, Want some more? Showing the alcohol bottle. I nodded and he poured me another glass of mango margarita before pouring himself the same. How long have you been working here? I asked him. Two years now, he said, smiling. Do you like it a lot? Maybe the alcohol was taking over me, which made me ask more questions. Not really, but I have no other option. I have to support my family, he said, sounding a bit low. Then what do you want to do? I asked, getting curious. I want to open my martial arts academy. I teach on the weekends to all the young kids who will want to join the park nearby. And I love doing it every time, he said, meaning every word. I smiled, looking at his purity. Oh, so that's why you fought the guy well, I said, and he nodded. What are you doing in Hawaii? He asked me. Well, it's a long story. I told him everything without even realizing, and I could see the pity and sympathy in his eyes. I can't believe someone who can do that, he said. We both let our emotions flow, and I told a lot about ourselves to each other. The moment got intense, and I looked at him only to realize he was sitting dangerously close to me. He faced me and figured out the tension between us. He moved silently closer, and I was about to give in until I pulled myself back and built some control in myself. It's getting late. I should leave, I said. Oh yeah, he replied with a slightly disappointed look on his face. I took my belongings and went outside. As I walked out the street, it was nearly midnight and there was hardly anyone around. The area was dark and only one street light was on, reflecting some light, manageable enough for me to make it back to my hotel. I started walking and remembered the small alley I took to come here from the hotel in the evening. However, this time I looked a bit scary because no one was around. I walked down the alley until I felt a tight grip on my arms and my wallet being pulled from my pockets, phone being snatched by another man. I let out a scream, but before I could scream anymore, they covered my mouth. I was struggling to free myself. I saw some bottles kept close to my leg, so I kicked them hard, so it made some sound and someone came to help me. I kept praying for some help as I was getting robbed. In almost five minutes, I heard a bike sound that was very harsh. I was not able to see who it was, but the guys who covered me left me quickly. I turned back to notice none other than Alex on his bike, scaring the guys. They both dropped my phone and wallet and ran away. Alex got off his bike and came close to me, holding my face immediately. Are you okay? He said, but my lips couldn't speak a word. So instead, I attached mine to his, pulling him into a fast and hungry kiss, to which he responded equally. Ah, finally, I said, still feeling the rush from the alcohol. He smiled and said, let me drop you back. I nodded and hopped on his bike. He rode it safely and dropped me. I hope to see you soon, he said before leaving. I stood there for God knows how long, still trying to soak in the fact that we kissed. I don't remember a lot of things that happened last night, but to my surprise, I remember the kiss very well. I got up feeling a bit guilty though, as my marriage just broke, but I reminded myself that I shouldn't be the one feeling guilty and that it's not my fault, whatever happened. 
I will just enjoy the company of Alex while I'm here. I told myself before taking a shower and planning my entire day. I decided to visit the famous cafes for breakfast and go on for sightseeing. I went to a few shacks and dance parties, met a lot of people, although no one left an impression on me as deeply as Alex did. My heart called for him, so in the evening around 6, I left the dance party to find Alex. I walked down a different road this time to avoid any incident like yesterday. I walked in the hard rock to surprise Alex, but he was nowhere to be seen. I asked a few people here and there after searching for him, and got to know that it was his day off. This made my mood low and I didn't know what else to do, but then I thought of taking a step forward, hoping Alex wouldn't mind. Hey, it's me Parker from last night. I got your number from your friend at Hard Rock, I texted him. I waited for a while and my phone beeped. It was his message, the message read some location. I asked around a bit and found out it's a restro bar nearby, so I decided to go there and meet him. As I got in, I noticed his big built back and recognized him. I called out his name and he turned back, but what I saw then confused me a bit. I saw him holding hands with a girl. He gave me a low smile and called me towards him. Meet her. It's Lola, my girlfriend, he said, making me shocked. But I had to keep my cool. Hey, I'm Parker, I said, and she got up to greet me. She took hands and rubbed her thumb on my hands, making me feel weird, but I let it slide. We all sat, and he was telling me about where they met and all, and I pretended to be interested, but I was just confused and heartbroken. Why did he kiss me when he already had a girlfriend? I excused myself for a washroom break. I sat alone for a while. When I got out of the washroom stall, I heard some noise more like moaning, and I immediately recognized a voice. It was Lola. I had my doubts about her, but I needed to confirm. I hid behind the door to wait for her to come out in order to confirm my doubt, and I was right. She came out after five minutes with one of the friends Alex was with before. I was stunned. It reminded me of my relationship that ended because of cheating, and I couldn't hold it in. I felt a lot of rage and decided to tell Alex the truth. I walked out to find him standing in the corner. Alex, I need to talk to you, I told him. I need to tell you something as well, he said. Yeah, okay. Lola is... Oh, my soon-to-be fiancé is here, he said, looking behind me when I saw Lola walking towards us. But what I heard stopped me immediately from telling the truth. Fiancé, I thought. I can't do this. I don't have the heart to. Yeah, what were you going to say, Alex asked. I have to be somewhere, so I need to go, I told him, and he nodded. But listen to me before you go. I'm getting wedded, and you have to come, he told, as he was walking me out. My heart sank, but this time it sank for him rather than for myself. I was heartbroken. Anyways, but seeing this happening to him was ruining my soul. I simply nodded before leaving him there. Entire night and day I thought about what happened and how I had the chance to save him, but something in me stopping me. I didn't leave my hotel for the entire day. I sat and recalled the past two days and how amazing they were because of that decision I made to come here and leave my ex and then meet Alex here. That moment I realized Alex need to make a decision as well and whatever happened between us. I owe the truth to him. So I decided to see him one last time. I was about to walk out on the bar but I was surprised as I opened the door. It was Alex standing in front of my hotel room with alcohol in his hands. Care for a glass? He asked. He looked tired and messy, like he got into a fight but lost, which is shocking because I know his fighting skills. What happened? I asked, giving him a space to enter. He sat on the edge of the bed and broke down. I didn't know what to do. Did he find out about Lola? I wondered to myself. I want to free myself from all this, he said, almost whispering. Free from what? I asked. He kept the bottle down and took his shirt off, revealing all the fresh scars on his body. My jaw dropped. Who did this to you? I asked, feeling angry. How is it even possible? You know how to fight, I continued. Yes, but I cannot fight her, he replied. What? It's Lola. She abuses me whenever she gets irritated or her parents don't do whatever she wants. She takes it out on me, he said. But why? Why don't you just leave her? I asked. I can't. I need to support my family and she's the one helping me. I know I sound like an ass here, but I have no other option. She's getting what she wants from me and so am I. Plus, it's not that big. At least, she's not cheating on me or something. She's only with me, he continued, breaking my heart with every word he said. I can give you a better job. You can start right away now if you want in Boston, I told him. No, I can't leave my family alone here. I need to take care of them and everything else, he replied. I sighed and placed my hands on his bruise. I slowly glided my fingers against them. He held my hand, stopping it there. Let's pretend this never happened. I need you the most right now, he said, 
before pressing his lips against mine. I melted and kissed him back, knowing it's wrong, because he is getting married in two days. But I was selfish this time. We continued making out, which led us both on the bed and continued the deed. We fell asleep after that on each other, happy and satisfied with the feeling. To be honest, it didn't feel like I was having a relationship with a man for the first time. But the way he told me to keep it simple and secret, it was like he was scared to let his real self out. I should go now, he said. The first thing when I opened my eyes. I understood and nodded. That was the last time I saw him or heard from him. I texted him multiple times to ask if he's fine or if she did anything again, but I got no reply. After our night together, I felt like he was acting distant, but it was getting clearer as hours passed by. So I decided to go against myself for the sake of my true feelings for him. I canceled my tickets and extended my stay in Hawaii. I opened my suitcase and with a heavy heart, I picked out my wedding suit. The one I wore while coming here. I made up my mind to go to his wedding and witness it myself. I reached the venue and saw everyone gathered. All smiley faces are perfect for the wedding. I asked for Alex and walked upstairs to find him sitting all alone in his room. I opened the door and he was startled as he saw me as if he wasn't expecting me there, but he was also glad that I was there. I walked towards him and planted a kiss on the temple of his forehead before handing him an envelope and leaving him there. I walked out of the room and went down. The wedding started and the bride was there, but there was no sign of Alex. Everyone was whispering and murmuring, asking where Alex is. Lola was also tense and started creating a tantrum, which proved her anger issues to me. Minutes later, I saw Alex enter, very unlike a groom, holding the same envelope I have him. He walked full of rage and stood in front of Lola. He took some pictures out and threw it all over her face. The pictures revealed Lola cheating on Alex with multiple guys. She stood there all embarrassed in front of everyone. The gossip started and everyone was talking about them. Lola couldn't face the embarrassment and raised her hand to hit Alex out of anger, but Alex held her hand. Enough is enough, Lola. I won't let you do this to me anymore, he said. I saw everything, sitting in the corner while I had tears in my eyes. I was happy to see him stand for himself, just how I did. I saw my past repeat in front of me, and I could see myself in Alex. But I was happy that there was no love between them, even though Alex's trust was broken. I'm sorry, Lola said, and fell on the ground creating a scene. She started crying loudly and apologizing, even though we both knew she didn't mean it. I'm sure Alex isn't aware of my existence there, but he was doing everything I wanted to see him doing to Lola. I forgive you only because of whatever you have done for me until now, but never ever show your face again. I'm calling off this wedding, he said, and Lola lost her temper and started crying loudly, but Alex didn't care anymore. He left her there and walked back down the aisle alone. But before he could exit, he saw me sitting, his shoulders dropped, and his expression turned from angry to relief. Two seconds, that's all it took for him to walk towards me and kiss me right there in the church. I heard a few gasps, but none of us cared. I know this is too early, but will you marry me? He asked. He was right, it was too early, but not like my last relationship that took so much time worked out, so why not? Maybe this spontaneous trip wasn't so spontaneous. Maybe this was bound to happen. Yes, I replied. Conclusion and Parker decided to give it another month before marrying each other. Before Parker fell in love with Alex, he fell in love with Hawaii. So as a wedding gift, Parker decided to open his clinic here in Hawaii and permanently shift there. Alex was grateful to Parker and madly in love with him. Alex continued working in a hard rock bar, and they would hang out later once the bar is closed and Parker gets free from his clinic. Soon enough, Alex and Parker built enough money to buy a place nearby for Alex's martial arts classes. Both of their lives were settled and happily married. The end. What would you do if you were in the place of Alex? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.